Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my channel members for their ongoing support. If you would like your name to appear on screen, then you can click on the membership link that will be in the description down below. I have two tiers, one for shout outs and a second tier where you will get weekly members only content. This content will be catch up live streams, members only reactions, or sometimes I will do a pre recorded chatty get ready with me video where I update you on life stuffs. There is also, of course, the custom emojis and the cute animal badges next to your name. Of course, you just watching this video is already much appreciated, but if you wish to support the channel further, you can do so by subscribing, commenting, liking, sending super thanks, and of course, joining the membership. And now let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. And I am currently five weeks out-ish for a pro qualifier show in Portugal. So if you are... Hi... Hi. So if you are curious to see what bodybuilding prep is all about, then check it out. It's it's getting hard, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I'm starting to get very low on body fat, which is obviously unhealthy, and I don't promote that or anything, but it's it's just it's very difficult mentally and physically. But besides that point, uh, we're here to look at somebody who is the opposite, who has a lot of body fat, and that is good old glitters and glitter and lasers. Um, apparently, uh, I was asked, I asked, I did a previous reaction and I asked about Anna's, um, travel channel and, uh, you guys provided. So, we're going to look at a video called, oh, how I travel stress-free as a plus size woman, my secrets revealed. So. Hopefully this caffeine will do its work shortly. Let's scoot over and see what she has to say, shall we? So this is our first ever video for our Glitter and Lasers Adventures channel and I'm super excited because I'm gonna be answering all your burning questions about travel. So I gathered all the questions you guys have asked me over the years about travel, put them together and created a foolproof guide to traveling in a bigger body. I figured this was the best way to kick this channel off and also it becomes a resource. So whenever anybody has questions about these very things, I have them addressed in this video first and foremost because I wanna show you that everybody can see the world. Now before I get into all my I mean, I suppose every, within reason, everybody can see the world. But I, I do wonder for people that are her size, because I was actually I was talking to a subscriber about this in the DMs the other day. And we were talking about obesity. And, um, you know, some places naturally have higher obesity rates and stuff like that. But, like, I have never seen somebody her size in real life. You don't really see this a lot in Europe. And I know that... Um, Obviously, the pe people her size exist in Europe. I'm not saying they don't. I ju you just don't see them. Like very, I think like the biggest people get around here is like three, four hundred pounds maybe. But when you get like five, six hundred pounds, like death fat, infinity fats, you really, you really just don't see it. And um, I would just be curious, like how people like her, how they would navigate places like I don't know Rome. Or just general old European cities, not just Rome, but in general old European cities. A lot of it is walking, you can't drive, a lot of it is narrow. Um, the streets are uneven because these places are centuries old, you know, M millennia old, some of it even. So it's like, yeah, it, technically you can see everywhere in the world, I suppose. But the reality of it is, it's like, how are you truly going to explore the places when you're a certain size? Like, for example, in the castles that you have in England, and you have, like, the small spiral staircases, right, in the castles. Can, like, like, seriously, can she even fit in one? Could, would she even be able to get to the top levels of certain castles because the spiral cases are so narrow? I, I don't know. Like, I generally don't know with the width that she is if she could fit in there. So yeah, technically I suppose you could, but like how could you how can you truly experience a place when you're limited by your size, which you are. You're limited because of uh, your stamina, your physical ability to move around in terms of like just 
fitting into places, uh, you're gonna. I mean, like you, you're gonna be be gawked at. People are gonna stare at you, which she may not care about. But you know, it's, I can I can assure you, you'd be an attraction in itself. And that's not to be mean. It's just that you just don't see people her size over here. And I said, like I said about myself, I'm an attraction. Like people, people look at me because I'm very different. So there's not a lot of big muscular women walking around here. So people are going to look, you know. Tips and tricks for traveling. I want to make sure that you know to subscribe, like, comment, hit the notification bell. We are a new channel and we are doing this all for free right now. So we would really appreciate any love you can throw our way. So let's start at the very beginning. And this is a phrase you're going to hear me say a lot throughout this video is that planning is key. Planning to me is the most important part because it will greatly affect whether you have a good trip or a bad trip. And that's not because you're planning, you know, adventures or that you can't change your plans once you're in country, but it's going to just give you that sense of comfort. And I think a lot of our discomfort in traveling in bigger bodies really is more due to our anxiety than the actual country itself not being accessible. And that's been my personal experience. And I think that when I talk to other travelers, it's similar. Sure. There's, a I mean, surely you always have to plan for travel right you can't just i mean some people don't some people are very off the cuff off the cuff for stuff i'm not one of those people i like to plan for everything always going to be an idiot that says something to you and that doesn't matter what country state or region you are in there will always be someone because there's always someone in the world but you have to make the choice to not listen to that one person and instead focus on all the amazing things that are around you so let's talk about planning first Let's start with the hardest thing, planning your flight. Now, I probably get more questions about flying than I do anything else. And the first thing I'm gonna say is, there is a ton of resources out there about plane seats, about armrests, about all the different information about the plane. Everything you need to know to decide whether you need one seat or two seats, whether you'd be more comfortable in economy or business class. Personally, I buy two seats, and I'll tell you why I do. Some because you take up two seats, and good for her that she does that. She should do. She takes up two seats, so you should pay for two seats. Times I fit fine. But in the rare chance that I don't, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want the stress. So I've just decided for my mental health, two economy seats is the best way to travel for me. I will say if you're flying Southwest and purchase two seats, they will actually credit you the second seat back once you arrive at your destination. You just need to call in. All other airlines, it's kind of a different process depending on the airline, but typically it's you book your ticket and then you call the airline and book the secondary ticket for the extra seat. Some of them also have codes like EXST as your middle name to do that as well on your own. So it's just gonna depend on which airline you choose to fly and where you're headed. But research the seats. Now the sites I like to use to research are Seat Guru, and then also the airlines themselves have tons of details about their aircrafts. Personally, I think United's are the most robust. They'll tell you the pitch, they'll tell you the no. width, and they'll also tell you whether the armrests go up on each side. Now the armrests are important because if you're in between or maybe you don't have money to spring for an extra seat, you can always purchase an aisle seat with an armrest that goes up. It's going to give you a little bit more room. You're going to have to have the bar down. When How uncomfortable is that going to be then? So every time somebody walks past you, they're basically going to walk into you. Well, I guess you're in an aisle seat, it's something. It'd be worse if you were sitting in the middle. When you take off and when you land, but for the rest of your flight, that can be up and give you a little bit more comfort. So first and foremost, plan what seat you get on the airplane so it's not a surprise when you get there. Next, you gotta plan your activities. And all I'm gonna say is know your boundaries. I think a lot of people get over ambitious on holiday and they end up ruining their vacation by doing something that's just a little bit out of their comfort zone. I am chronically doing this to myself, so I have no room to talk, but sometimes I'm on vacation to push myself, so it just depends on what you're going for. Also look for things like weight limits and things that are required on trip. They'll say some of the weight limits are literally just a proxy for abilities. So the example I always give people is, I wanted to go snorkeling when I was in Belize and I saw that there was a weight limit of like 250 pounds. And I was like, that seems a little bizarre. You don't need to like be a certain weight to snorkel, you just need to know how to swim. So I called the service and I inquired about the weight limit and they said, well, we have a little bit of a concern because we've had trouble with people not being able to get on the boat afterwards. So they had no problem what weight you were, they were just creating a proxy weight to prevent the situation to happen, which is where they couldn't get the woman back on the boat. So again, here's where knowing yeah, that's something to consider, isn't it? Obviously, like if you're like if you're the key, she can't pull herself up. I can't imagine like pulling up like what five six hundred pounds. That's a mighty pull up. Like for for real. Like I'd be impressed if she could do that. So yeah, that makes sense. I didn't even think about that, but that yeah, that makes perfect sense. And like, what if there is an issue that like they're almost drying, drowning, or you know something's happened? Like, how are you going to be able to potentially swim and rescue somebody back? You probably can't because they're too heavy, right? So yeah, that makes sense. 
and your abilities, and I knowing I have like pretty strong upper arm strength, that's not gonna be an issue for me. Even though I'm over their weight limit, I'm gonna be fine on that activity. So things to think about when you're planning and also always call the place to find out more information. Just because it says it's not gonna work for you doesn't mean it's actually not going to. If you really wanna do it, you probably can find a way to do it if you call and have discussion with them. I always like to, as like another level of this, is to plan activities I just like have to see and do and activities that would be nice to do. That way, if I push myself on an activity that I really wanted to do, I can opt to have a lazy rest of the day. Sometimes people go on trips and they pack way too much in and what ends up happening is they end up getting hurt or they end up not actually enjoying their trip. So as a bigger lady, sometimes I don't think about how humidity and altitude and other things might affect me. And since sometimes you don't really know those things until you're in the location, that's why planning like this is really helpful. I think that kind of applies to everybody though. Like you don't know until, until you're there. Plan your transportation. So aside from the aircraft, you might have buses, you might have boats, you might have other things. Again, this is important to know how big are those seats? Are you gonna need extra space? Communicate those with your tour providers before you even go. So you're not trying to be crammed into a bus in a place you don't really fit because you didn't tell them that you would like a little extra room. Again, it's just communicating and planning. That's all it is. And the, the last thing, thing I'm gonna well, say in the planning process oh. is to learn about the thing is as well is that in a lot of like i said in a lot of european countries obesity on this scale is just not a thing you just don't see it so i can't imagine somebody her size or like amber size like jumping on the freaking bus here like i it, there just wouldn't be space for them and i don't think people would be bothered to accommodate them either because people like people in europe can be kind of crass they can be kind of rude. Um, they're not like the friendly Americans at all, actually. People can be very rude over here. Like, and I don't mean just over here in Bulgaria, I just mean in general, in, in Europe, people can be quite rude. So I don't know, I don't think they would be that accommodating. And then if you, especially if you were to go to like um, developing countries where there is like really a lot of poverty and like the public transport is incredibly cramped, uh, I don't know how that would go. <laughs> I wouldn't want to gamble. Uh. The language of where you're traveling. It goes a long way in showing the people in that country that you value and appreciate their culture. Additionally, when you need help and you start by trying to speak to them in their native language, they're more likely to help you. Um, a story that my friend told me, she's a French teacher, she said that the reason some French people think Americans are rude is because when a French person goes into a business, the first thing they do is say hello. In America, the first thing we do when we go to business is just kind of say our order. So right off the bat, not knowing that cultural difference, you've already put yourself in the position of being viewed as rude. I mean, it's kind of common sense, isn't it, to learn the basics. Hello, Rosa. Good morning. When you go somewhere to just learn how to say hi and thank you and stuff like that. But then who am I to talk? I still don't know any Bulgarian, really. I know, I know a little bit, but not, not very much. But then I haven't really tried to learn, to be honest. That's like when you live in a capital city, you don't always need, like, it just is like that way you live. Hello. In capital cities, you don't need to um, use the language as much because pretty much many people speak English. Because you're not aware of the culture and the language of the country that you're visiting. Now, let's talk about packing. Packing is critical when you're plus size because you don't have the option of rebuying in country most of the times. Yes, there are always plus stores. I found plus size stores in Thailand and India all over, but a lot of times you have to have those items shipped to you or they may not have a ton of stock available. So I like to think about what are my essentials. I, I don't know where she would buy clothes around here. There may be that there is a shop somewhere in Sofia that uh, is dedicated to women her size or people her size, but there's not going to be many of them. There's no way she can walk into a... Like, I struggle finding shoes in my... <laughs> what? What is it? Good morning. I sometimes find... I struggle here in Bulgaria. I find... I struggle finding shoes in my size. Because I'm, I'm a tall person, so I've got fairly big feet. And like, I, I'm like a 41, a European 41, which is like not that big, but like often shoe size go up to like 39 here. But hmm. what, why are you being so noisy? Do you need to have a cuddle? Do you want to have a cuddle? Come Sorry, my girl had to come and have a cuddle by the looks of things. Is that what it is? Were you being a little needy girl? Were you being a little needy girl? Oh, yes she is, look, look. Essentials, and for me, the things I found I can never get in another country are underwear, swimsuits, and pants. So I make sure that I pack extra of those items because I know I can't replace them in country. I will say you can always find an oversized t-shirt. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, there will always be an oversized t-shirt for you. I literally have gotten a t-shirt in almost every country I've been to without a problem. The other thing to think about panking too is putting 
most of those items that you know are critical that you can't replace in your carry-on. One item that's essential to me that I actually carry in my backpack and at arm's reach at all times is chafing stick. We've talked about this before in terms of like swimming, keeping the chafe from in between your legs, but just in traveling, it can be a godsend. Even on logging flights, I like to put it in just because sometimes your thighs are sandwiched together and it gets a little hot and you know, it just gets friction, right? <laughs> between these hot thighs. So are they things a shaving stick? I didn't know that existed. It makes sense. But that's kind of crazy to think about. Like, what does it do? Does it just like stop you from what does it, what does a shaving stick do? Does it stop the does it stop you from getting rashes and stuff? I guess it must do, right? So with that friction, having that chafe stick on protects you and makes sure that you don't ruin your vacation by taking a long flight. So just be prepared and always have chafe stick. So last item. I would imagine for long flights and stuff, she must use compression gear as well, or like in stuff that promotes blood flow, right? Because people her size, they, they must be more prone to things like deep vein thrombosis and stuff like that. Talk about in relation to packing is shoes. So I have a rule, unless I'm shooting a lookbook somewhere, I only bring shoes that I can walk a mile in. And that's because you can't take a bunch of shoes or you really shouldn't take a bunch of shoes when you're traveling. They just take up so much space in a suitcase. So I like to stick to my Tevas, my Hoka's and my Vionics. Those are shoes that I know will support my feet no matter how far I walk and I can wear them. That he can walk a mile in. Walking a mile is not that far though. If you're thinking about exploring a European city, you need to be able to walk more than a mile. Like if in any time you walk around any European city, you're doing maybe like 20 to 30,000 steps a day. That's easily done because that's just how it is. You walk everywhere. Now we're gonna talk about actually getting on a plane and flying somewhere. And this is the point where most people have the most anxiety. This is where I've had the most questions. So the first thing I heard from a lot of you is like, what do I do when I'm walking down the aisles? Am I gonna be too big for the aisles? What's it gonna be like? Here's my pro tip. If you are nice, and the key to this is being nice, that's an overarching theme here. If you go to the front desk, if you arrive a little early and ask to pre-board, they will let you pre-board. If you purchase two tickets, you automatically get to pre-board, but if you're just nervous and wanna have that experience on your own and have only purchased one seat, just ask to pre-board. That way you don't have to worry about anyone around you, you can walk through, and you can do our second thing, which is ask for a seatbelt extender more privately, right? Since nobody else is on the plane, other than maybe the couple other people that pre-boarded, some who might be in a similar situation to you, you can convenient. But normally speaking, you pay for that though, right? You can pay for the early check-in. So, I don't know, why would you ask for it for free? Like, if that's, if other people have to pay for it, you just normally, with, especially with the cheaper flights here, like Wizz Air and Ryanair, you can pay to do the early boarding. So like, why would you, why would you ask for it? It's a little bit unfair, isn't it? So it's like, basically, I have to pay extra to get on, on the on the flights early before other people, but you want to get on there before me because you're a big person. It's like, well, why am I paying extra then? There's three other things that I have not heard anyone talk about that have affected me personally on flights, so I'm going to talk about them. The first is if you buy two seats, especially when they're smaller, more regional flights, sometimes the buckle on the seat has a sharp edge. I've literally ripped my pants. Actually, I ripped them on the way to Orlando from these little sharp points. So I always bring a sweatshirt or something that I can throw over that point so I don't cut my pants and so it doesn't like jab me the entire flight. Now this is more just on the regional flights, but it is really irritating. And if you didn't know it was gonna be there, it can kind of be a mood killer. The second thing is bathrooms. Now I know a lot of people just hold it. I literally didn't even think about that, but like they are small toilet, like bathrooms in an airplane are tiny. I bet you can't even fit in one. Like seriously, she must be the cubic volume. Her height and size and circumference must be pretty much the cubic volume of a toilet. I wonder, I'm curious to see how she navigates this. But when you're on a very long flight, that's not really an option. So for long haul flights, most of them, and I say most because it's technically all of them should have it, but we all know people break the rules. Most long haul flights will have a handicapped bathroom. These bathrooms are much larger. Oh considerably larger than the smaller bathrooms you might be familiar with on regional flights. And those are the best places to go to the bathroom. And, and frankly, everybody wants to go to those bathrooms. So if you ever see a woman like go into the bathroom and come out like in a completely new outfit, she went to the handicapped bathroom. There's enough room to like literally change your whole look and open your suitcase in there. So that's the best place to be <laughs> in a flight is that handicapped bathroom. And just ask where it is. It's usually in the middle of the flight and on the left-hand side, but some planes are different. And the last thing we're gonna talk about in relation to all of this is if you're on a long haul flight, your feet are probably gonna swell. I would recommend getting some compression socks. Yeah. I really That's what I was saying about compression gear. Really like Vim and Vigor. If you have plantar fasciitis like I do, I will link a pair that I like that just go over the foot and the ankle. And those have been a godsend for me in keeping swelling down. You don't wanna start your trip off being swollen. It's not fun. So the easiest thing to do is be proactive. You mean more swollen. Active, use those compression socks when you're in flight. Now we're at our destination and we get somewhere 
and we're uncomfortable, right? Either the chair isn't right, or maybe the tour guide's walking too fast, or you just feel out of sorts. Advocate for yourself. And I know that's scary, by the way. I know that, like, I just said that off the cuff, like, advocate for yourself, but you have to. You have to advocate for yourself. In a video that you guys are gonna see shortly where we did like an AI inspired trip, I went to a restaurant and they brought out the devil plastic chair. <laughs> if you're a plus size person, you know about the, the saga that is the white plastic chair. I mean, you're, you're gonna break them. They're not very sturdy. I, I don't know what the weight limit is on them, but I'm gonna guess what, like 100, 150 kilos max, if even that. I have never been in a situation traveling where I haven't said something and the problem was immediately fixed. Literally, especially around things regarding my weight because most times hotels are just uninformed. They just don't know what to do. So if you tell them what to do, they'll just do it. The last thing I'm gonna say about traveling and this, this, this is the hardest part, but don't get caught up in what you think people are saying about you. Yeah, we well, shouldn't do that anyway. People are always gonna think and say things, isn't it? People are always gonna have opinions. So worrying about what other people think about you is just not gonna, it's, 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 it's their problem, it's not your problem. Um, every time I travel somewhere uh, more unusual, somewhere that maybe people don't travel on an everyday basis, like China or uh, Myanmar or like South America, right? Places that aren't like Cancun or Bahamas, right? People are always like, those people are gonna be so mean to you because you're fat. I'm gonna tell you right here, that has never been my experience. The amount of people who have told me I was gonna have a miserable experience in insert country name because I was overweight far exceeds the actual bad experiences I have in a country because- um, I don't think people will treat them bad. I don't, think people, I don't think people get treated bad because they're obese. I think they'll just get looked at because it's different. You'll, but I don't think people will treat you worse. Like, why would they? People are not gonna, normally people don't treat other people bad in general, unless you're just like a, a shitty person. But for the most part, people will just like stare and get on with their day. That's it. That's of my weight. A great example is when I went to China, everybody told me, oh, Chinese people are gonna be very difficult on your weight. They're going to harass you for it. I had zero, zero experiences. And I talk to people, man. Like I am out there. I put myself out there. This is my like closing statement, my last words. You will have the vacation you believe you deserve. So if you think that everybody's judging you and hating at you and looking at you, you're gonna see that. And that's all you'll be able to see. But if you're going somewhere and you're thinking about connecting with the culture and getting to know people and seeing great things, that's what you're gonna see and experience. It's your choice. So let the anxiety go. To be fair, this is kind of true in everything really. Like a lot of it is mindset. If you if you go into things with a negative mindset, then yeah, you're not gonna have a great experience, are you? But that's not that doesn't apply to her. That's just like life in general, I suppose. Oh. So, sure, somebody's gonna say something. As we covered, someone will always say something. But it doesn't matter. You got to get out there. You got to see the world. And that far exceeds what some idiot thinks about your body. And most of the time, we think people are, are saying things about us, and they're not. They're talking about their coworker or their buddy or their friend. One time, I had a person call me big in China, and they were saying that I was big and beautiful. And I was like, I am. <laughs> so, again, you will have the vacation you choose to have. You will have an experience in the world based on how you see the world. And that's just how it is. So try to keep yourself focused on the good and let all the crap fly away and you'll have an amazing trip. Now, if you have any other questions that I did not address in this video, and I really did plan this out to answer as many questions as I could, please leave them down below and I'll do a part two. But with that guys, welcome to Glitter and Lasers Adventures. I'm so excited to see the world with you. All right, well, there you go. Uh, I'm gonna apologize if I'm a bit yawny. I didn't sleep much because I was hungry. <laughs> uh, so this will be probably me for the next five weeks. I will be probably quite tired, yawny and hungry in most of my reactions. So it's it's not you, it's me. <laughs> it's not that I'm bored with the videos, it's just that I'm tired and hungry. <laughs> so um, yeah, well, she had some fair points, but I think a lot of that can be applied to pretty much everybody. So. Regardless, I do feel like the way she approached this video is a lot more likable than how other obese people have approached travel. She's doing it in a... She, at least she is aware of the fact that she is an inconvenience. I don't mean to be horrible, but that's the reality of it. Uh, and she is saying, like, just don't... She's trying to encourage people to not go from a place of entitlement, but to go, come from a place of um, just being, you know asking nicely as opposed to assuming that they are deserving of more 
and that's very fair enough like it is so you achieve a lot more by being nice and stuff like that so anyway i'm gonna go because clearly i need more caffeine so on that note thanks a lot for watching insert a an island and an airplane emoji comment like subscribe dislike the video if you disliked it let me know down below why and i'll see you in the next video bye guys